evening or good morning from wherever you are watching us from this is new creation realities and i'm so excited once more again uh, to have this uh, broadcast i wish to invite you to pray with us as a ministry but most importantly i wish to welcome you to partner with us as god leads you and if god leads you to partner with us feel free to send us your love offering in our till number 696845 praise the name of the living god i want us to take a moment and just get straight away into the word of god today we read from isaiah 54 uh 45 18 sorry we read from isaiah 45 let's do from 19 let's pray father in the mighty name of jesus we are truly grateful for the privilege of such an hour we know by revelation that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god we know that in the entrance of the world haha <laughs> there is light there is light and there is an understanding for the simple rap la brondo bo kusetele ba ike sata la brondo kotele bo sikatala ba so lord even as we open up ourselves to your word we pray that this word may be opened up for us in jesus name we have prayed hallelujah glory to god so isaiah uh 4519 the bible says this i have not spoken in secret uh in a dark place of the earth i have he says i said not unto the seed of jacob remember we are the seed yes he said i said not unto the seed of jacob seek ye me in vain praise god what does it even mean when scripture says i said not unto the seed of jacob seek me in vain what god is saying is he did not ask us to seek him in vain because it is not possible that a man can seek god in vain god has not invited us to seek him for nothing no god has not called you to seek him or to serve him for nothing god is not vain god is not vain there is no way god can invite a man to seek him and seek him in vain it is not possible it is unacceptable it is ungodly it is unrighteous for a man to seek to know god and go for a vain venture praise the name of the living god he says i say not unto the seed of jacob seek me in vain seek me in vain god has not called us god has not called you god has not called me god has not called anyone because he has never called no man to seek him in vain or for nothing praise the name of the living god and that's exactly what this scripture is telling us that god is not invited me god has not invited you to seek him in vain praise god in other words you can't seek god you can't serve god and remain the same person yesterday today and tomorrow there is no man not even one that i know who has sought god by invitation of god and they have remained the same 
You cannot suffer the same frustration. You cannot suffer the same sicknesses. You cannot, you cannot be in a perennial place, a place of stagnation year in and year out when you set your heart to seek God by the invitation of God. It is not possible. It is not possible because the Bible says that God is not unjust. In fact, the second bit of this scripture, it says, I, the Lord, speaks righteousness. I speak righteousness. He cannot be unrighteous. He cannot be unfaithful. He says, I declare a thing and it... See, listen, look at He says, I declare things that are right. God is ever right. He speaks righteousness. Praise the name of the living God. So when the Bible says uh, 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 that uh, I said unto the seed of Jacob, seek me ye, he says, seek ye me in vain. Praise God. It basically means uh, that no man is called to seek or to serve God in vain. It is not for nothing. Praise the name of the living God. And listen, if for any reason you've been seeking God, if for any reason you've been serving God and there is nothing to show, and there is nothing to show, and there is no difference, and there is no transformation, and there is no progress to show that you've been invited to seek God and to serve God, it is only possible in the realm of the things I am going to say. Number one, it is only possible, it is only possible that you are seeking and serving God for nothing if, number one, you are seeking a God who does not exist. Unless the God you are seeking and unless the God you are serving does not exist. But if, if, listen, listen, listen. Hebrews chapter 11, 6 says that it is impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to, to please God. But it says, but anyone who comes to him must first believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. Now, if the God you are seeking and the God you are serving, the Bible introduces him as a rewarder of those who seek him. Praise God. Praise God. If the God you are seeking exists, he is a rewarder. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You see, when God called Abraham, God introduced himself to Abraham as he says, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. In other words, say, Abraham, I am inviting you to seek me. But number one, I am your shield. But number two, I am your great reward. And God calls Abraham from his father's household, from his mother's household. He calls him into a work. And when Abraham moves out of his father's house, he did not remain the same. He came out of his father's house poor and in a twinkling of an eye. The Bible introduces Abraham as a filthy, rich, and wealthy man owning everything. Praise God. In a twinkling of an eye, a man has met a God who introduces himself as a shield and an exceeding great reward and his life changes in a twinkling of an eye. That's what I'm saying. Unless, unless you are seeking or serving a God who does not exist. But the God we know exists and he is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. He says, I am not unjust. I will not forget your work. 
Hebrews chapter 6.10. He says, I'm not unjust. I will not forget your work. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it should be verses 56. He says, he says, he says, he says, you, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It cannot be in vain. Because he's not a vain God. He's not a God of vanities. Praise God. He's not a God of vanities. He says your labor in the Lord is not and cannot be in vain. You cannot seek God in vain. I forbid you to seek God. God in vain because it is unrighteous, it is unacceptable, it is ungodly. It should never be heard of that there is a man outside there who has set their heart to seek God for nothing because it is not possible. Praise the name of the living God. So if, listen, if by any means you know a man or you know a person who sought their hearts, who set their hearts to seek God and it seems or it appears as if it was in vain, it is simple. It is because they were seeking or they were serving a God who does not exist. Of course, there are gods that don't exist. Of course, there are gods who don't exist. But this God, this God, the God of Abraham, this God, the God of Isaac and Jacob, the God of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, he is ever present, even for us. He goes ahead of us. He is always behind us, around us, above us, and most importantly, he abided. He lives inside of us. The Spirit of God. God who raised Christ from the dead forever remained and abided in, our, in us. Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. Unless you are seeking a God who does not exist. You cannot say that I've been seeking God for I don't know how many years and he could not heal you. He introduces himself as a healer. You cannot say, I have sought God and he did not heal me. I have sought God and he did not deliver me. I have sought God and he did not break me through. I have sought God. No, 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 no. The God I'm talking about is a God who heals. He's a God who provides. He's a God who delivers. He is a God who vindicates. He justifies. As the Bible says, he justifies even the unrighteous. How can he not? Vindicate a righteous man where he vindicates the unrighteous man. Praise God. So number one, if you are seeking God and it appears as though nothing is moving, nothing is changing, it's very possible, number one, we say, you are seeking a God who does not exist. But number two, unless you are seeking a God you don't know. Unless you are seeking a God you don't know or a God who does not know you. How is it even possible? It is possible that you don't know God. But how is it even possible that God does not know you? He says in Matthew chapter 7, 21, and Jesus said, Get away from me, for I never knew you. There are those people Jesus will tell, I never knew you. And there are people who God does not know because they are dead to him. There are people who are dead to God because they are alive in other places. There are men outside here. There are people who outside here who are alive in every place but not in God. Because as far as God is concerned, they are dead to him. You will find a man, you will find a man who can watch a movie or a series for six hours, non-stop, non-interrupted, but he cannot listen for a sermon for one hour without a million destruction. This is a man who is dead to God. That's why they cannot be alive to the things of God. They can be alive to 
everything else but not the things of God. They can watch a movie. They can be in places and concentrate. But when it comes to the place of conversations with God, they cannot stop being interrupted. You find a man sitting in a board meeting for five hours, even ten hours, none interrupted. They cannot, they cannot even, even go to help themselves. But they come to the presence of God and they cannot sit down and settle for 20 minutes without walking in and walking out. These are men who are dead in God and alive in the things that have nothing to do with God. And that's why I'm saying there are people who don't know God or the God they are seeking or even the God they are seeking don't know them because they are dead. They are not awakened to the things of God. How can things work for you when you are dead to a God who is supposed to make things work for you? And that's why there are people who seem to seek God in vain. Why? Because they are, they are dead to a God who is supposed to cause things to work for them. And we don't understand, say, have been attending church, have been attending fellowship, and nothing seems to work. It is because you are dead to a man who is supposed to cause things to work in you and for you. And now everything seems to work against people. Why? Because we have not learned how to be awakened in God and dead to the things of the world. When we are dead to the appetites of the world, but alive in the things of God. I don't know any man out there who is alive to the things of God. And, and, and God is not working in them and through them to turn around things or to turn around situations. So it is very possible that the reason why it seems as though you are seeking and serving God in vain, it is because you don't know the God you are seeking or the God you are seeking does not know you because you are dead to him and alive in every places but not in God. The Bible says we are alive in Christ because Christ is alive in us. We were dead to sin. We were dead to the world but alive in Christ. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. The life that I live in the flesh, it is all by faith through the Son of God who loved me. Praise the name of the living God. But number three, it is possible. It is possible that you seem to seek and serve God in vain. Because you are seeking God the wrong way. You are seeking God the wrong way. The book of Haggai, chapter 1, 6, it says, consider your way. Consider your way. In, in, in Haggai, the, the scriptures introduces us to a people who nothing seemed to be working for them. The Bible said they planted much, they harvested nothing. They, will, they, 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 they would get their pays and only to put them in piles that have holes and they arrive home with nothing. They would put on clothes, you know, uh, and yet they could not stop feeling cold. Why? Because of the way they were seeking God. There is a way we seek God and we end up with no results. There is a way that God has laid down that we should seek him. And if we cannot seek him in the way that he has laid down for us to seek him, even if we seek him, we will not find him. Jesus said that time is coming when true worshippers will seek and will worship and will serve God. But in truth and in spirit, there is a way God has laid it down that we should seek him, that we should serve him, that we should pray to him. Praise the name of the living God. So it is very possible that it appears as though you are seeking and serving God in vain because you are seeking him the wrong way. 
Romans chapter 10, the Bible says, because they did not know, they did not know the way of the righteousness of God. They went ahead to establish their own righteousness and then they called it righteousness and then they could not understand why they could not find a right standing with God. Why? Because they have established their own way of righteousness having walked away for, from the way of God that makes a man righteous. There is a way God, and there is a way God has made man righteous. Praise God. But if we don't know the way of God, we go ahead and establish our own way and call it the way of God. How can things work away from the way of God? He says, I am the way. I am the way. It can only work when it is God's way. If it is not working, it is possible. It is not God's way. And that's why in Haggai he says, consider your ways. He says, consider your ways. He says, consider your ways. It is possible that you are seeking God the wrong way. But number four, the reason why to many people, they seem to seek God and serve God for nothing it is because they seek God out of lust. There are people who are seeking God out of lust, out of vanity. All they want from God are things that mean nothing to God. James chapter 4, 1, he says there are quarrels among us. We ask for things we don't seem to get. Why? Because even the very things we are asking God of, they are things that God has not placed value in them. So we ask for vanities so that we may use those vanities for show off. We want to show off. We don't seek to have so that what we have can demonstrate or show the workings of of God in us and through us. No, we are asking so that we can show off to people that we have, not that we have received of God or from God, so that we may show to people that we have what they don't have. So we ask and we seem not to have. Why? Because we are asking for what God considers nothing. The Bible says in John chapter 15, that apart from me, you can do nothing. Sometimes we ask for what God calls nothing. You may could be asking for what God does not consider worth it. And yet we want it because we there is a need for us to show it. It is called lust. The lust of the eye. The things we see with our eyes and we want and we want and we want, and we cry the whole night wanting, and wanting, and wanting, not even because it is important for us, but it is important that we show people that we have. He's a God who pays our bills. He's a God who meets our needs, but he's not a God who entertains our lusts. Praise the name of the living God. Glory to God. Last but not least, if it seems not to be working, if it seems not to be working, even though you are seeking and serving God, it is possible you are seeking God as a means to an end. You are seeking God is a means to an end. Like the ten lepers, they sought God for what end? That they may be healed and go back to their normal lives. So that those who needed to pursue school, their degrees and their masters and their PhDs could go back to their pursuits. But there is this one man who was seeking God, not as a means to an end, but as a means to enter into a fellowship with God. Praise God. Praise the name of the living God. Matthew chapter 6, 33, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Listen. Our goal as seekers is to know God. Nothing else, nothing less, nothing more. Daniel chapter 11, 32, the Bible says, And the people who know their God 
shall be strong. They shall do exploits. That is our goal, to know God. People who know God have no choice but to do. We can only do to the degree that we know. You can only go as far as you know. You can only do as far as you know. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Your freedom comes in the degrees and in the realms of the knowledge that you carry of God. Praise the name of the living God. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 3, it says, it says uh, through his divine power, God has given us everything that we need for life and for godliness through our knowledge of him. It is through our knowledge of him. It is through our knowledge of him. Our, God, our goal should be to know him and him crucified. Apostle Paul says, to know him and him crucified. Nothing else. That is our goal. Our goal is not to seek God so that he may heal us. Listen, when we seek God the right way, we don't need to ask him to heal us. We don't need to ask him to deliver us. We don't need to ask him to change us. In our seeking God, change is inevitable. It is inevitable. It happens naturally because it is in the nature of God to release certain things. Even those things we've not asked for, but because we've asked for the right thing, first seek the kingdom of God, his righteousness. These other things are given, are given, are added, not because we asked for those things. No, no, no. They are added not because we asked for them, but they are added because they come with the nature of God. They are added because they come with the nature of God. This is an introduction to this series. God has not called no man to seek him in vain. God has not called you to seek him in vain. God has not called no man to seek him in vain. There is no man out there whom God called and sought him for nothing. And you won't be the first one. I can't be the first one. And I swear, I forbid you to be that man who will seek God in vain. Unless you are talking about a God you have no idea. God bless you. I'll see you.